Nicole Scott here from Mobile Geeks and welcome to Shenzhen. And today I'm here to ask the question, what happens to a mobile phone after you recycle it? Well, depending on how old it is, it could end up in a developing country, but sub $100 handsets are getting, well, pretty good. So the chances of somebody who earns less than a dollar a day wanting something that's not 2G enabled, well, that's pretty slim. Now, these old gadgets that you're just not going to use, like a audio cassette player or maybe your compact disc player, what happens to things like these or even just those old mobile phones? Well, I'm here in Shenzhen to answer that question and to take a look at some of the alternatives to your gadgets ending up in the dump. So why Shenzhen? Well, it shouldn't come as no surprise that the West has been shipping their garbage east for years. But what is it about Shenzhen that's been attracting all this global e-waste? Since the mid-1980s, China has been home to a thriving business devoted to remaking and refurbishing used electronics. No one knows the scale or the revenue, but you can bet it's big. There isn't one town or village that doesn't have at least one used electronics market. And here in Shenzhen, there are entire city blocks devoted to reusing rather than recycling. Now the craziness and madness of Hua Chung Bay should give you just a, a taste of just how massive China's electronics ecosystem for manufacturing really is. Now they're not creating these computers out of thin air. They need precious metals to make it happen. So in theory, recycling cell phones is a cheaper and greener means of extracting gold. But how exactly do you make that happen? Well, you feed the phone into a shredder, turn it all up, and then through a rather expensive and kind of toxic process, use some chemical acids to extract the gold away. And you're gonna get a lot of the rare earth elements out of there, but you're not gonna get everything. Or there's the other way we see here in Shenzhen, where the boards are stripped by hand of precious metal bearing chips before they hit the blades. So what exactly happened in the 80s to cause China to become the e-waste powerhouse that it is today? Well, let's take IBM for example. When this huge company decided to move from rotary style telephones to uh, digital touch pads, what did they do with those? Or when they upgraded their mainframe servers, what happened to those old things? Well, the US in the 80s didn't have an electronic scrap system in place. So big companies like this basically just put them into shipping containers, sent them east, and didn't think twice about it. But what happened when that waste got to China well, Shenzhen specifically was something kind of awesome. The Chinese didn't really have computers then, so they were almost like gifts from the future. So they basically sold them at a huge profit. And that was where e-waste in China actually started. Straight up recycling. So if you're wondering how I got all of this footage, well, basically I did it by playing a dumb tourist. And whenever they would look too closely or too hard or too long, I would pull a macro shot on something really stupid, like a whole bunch of lightning connectors. They'd be like, oh, what's she doing? And I'd show them super proud of my lightning connector photo. And then they would look at each other and laugh. But there's been other times when I was a little less quick to move around or a little too um, starstruck or wonderstruck by what was going on that I would have my, ca my, my camera slapped down, uh, shoved out of the way, people walking in front of the camera, pushing me back. And, you know, I get it. This is China. You don't really want to be filmed doing anything too illegal. <laughs> so I'm Nicole Scott for Mobile Geeks here in Shenzhen. If you want to see more of these videos, subscribe to our channel because I have a whole series 
of me doing stuff here in Shenzhen, kind of exploring this really amazing underbelly of Chinese electronics, actually, no, global electronics. Nicole Scott here for Mobile Geeks. Yeah.